Hey guys, this is Alex Axeltoss Rodriguez with your NOS Pro Performance Tip. Today, we're going to look at how to execute an Immortal All-In as shown by Rain at the MLG Fall Championships. Rain, of course, is the defending OSL champion, and in this game, we're going to see him take on Vibe, the current WCS USA champion. In this game on Ohana, Rain is your Protoss player in the top left-hand location, and Vibe is the Zerg player in the bottom right. Ohana is a very common map for this build because of the relatively narrow pathway to your opponent's base. Lack of counterattack paths, shorter rush distance, frequency of choke points, rocks between your opponent's natural and third, and the ease with which you can take your natural expansion. Right at the start of this game, we see something interesting out of Rain when he places a pylon behind his mineral line. He rallies his 15th probe to create his second nexus while continuously building probes. Not only does this opening preserve mining time, but it's relatively safe against pretty much everything a Zerg can throw at you in the early game. Rain Scouting Probe goes out a bit later to preserve mining time, but it's a low-risk decision because of the safety of this build. When you eventually do scout, you are looking for how fast your opponent's slings come out, gas or lack thereof in the main base, and the timing of the third hatchery. As he is scouting, Rain follows up with a gateway, core, pylon, zealot wall at his natural expansion, chrono boosting nothing but probes. Rain proceeds to chrono a stalker as his second gateway unit, which will help him deny overload scouting and allow him to roam his side of the map and pick off stray lings and overlords. After this, his next 100 gas is used on a robotics facility so that immortal production can get up and running, so he chrono boosts the robot as much as possible. The faster three immortals get out, the faster the push can begin. After that, Rain moves towards sentry production, a staple unit in the immortal all-in. Plus one weapons is added on at around 610 when the gas money requirement is there. At around the seven minute mark, the second and third gateways are added on and probe production is halted at 44 to 48 probes. Here, Rain stops at 47, which means the push is a tad slower, but his economy is slightly higher than if he had pushed a little bit sooner. At the eight minute mark, Rain adds his final four gateways in preparation for his all in. Note where he places them, completely blocking off the entrance to his main base. A lot of Zergs elect to go for the base trade when facing an Immortal All-In because of how difficult it is to stop. Rain walls off the entrance to his main in order to aid in defending a possible base trade-minded Zerg. Once Rain has three Immortals and plenty of sentries, it's time for him to push across the map. A Warp Prism and Observer follow his main army. The Warp Prism is probably the most important unit at this point as it represents his reinforcement potential. If you lose the Warp Prism early, you will very likely lose the game. The march across the map must be gradual, yet efficient and methodical. If you take too long getting across the map, the Zerg has time to set up appropriate defenses and advance his tech. If you proceed too fast, you risk overextending and becoming vulnerable to the Zerg swarm. Rain in this game proceeds cautiously, hugging the doodads on the map in case he's suddenly surrounded. This means he won't have to expend as many force fields to keep his army safe. He continues to add units with the Warp Prism along the way. Using this method, he reaches his opponent's natural expansion very quickly. And once there, Vibe has no cost-efficient way to engage the army and is forced to GG. Guys, this has been Alex Axel Toss Rodriguez with your NOS Pro Performance Tips. Head on over to MajorLeagueGaming.com slash NOS for more Pro Performance Tips.